Good morning, Charlie. How you doing? Oh, am I in your way? You can't see? You're having some oatmeal. Oh, yeah. An app oatmeal and apples? It's a nice hairdo you got. Yeah. This bubble tea place, delicious. This sandwich spot, delicious. Next to one another, if you're ever at the intersection of Park Presidio and Geary, you have to stop by. It's uh, like right on the way to the Golden Gate Bridge, right in that major intersection. Anyway... Today has been kind of a dud. It's Monday afternoon. I stayed home all day in order to meet a guy to come fix our radiator. It's been leaking all weekend, uh, kind of doing damage to the wood floors. And unfortunately, nobody showed up. Uh, I guess it turns out this they're scheduled for Friday. Anyway, I just wanted to get it into uh, what had kind of uh, happened uh, Thursday, Friday in poker. Got a couple of videos from there. So we're going to jump into that as well as what happened uh, during the weekend. Uh, thanks for checking out the videos, and uh, catch you guys later. Peace. It's Thursday afternoon. Just finished up like a four-hour session. I uh, played like a nit today. Uh, nothing really going on. The games weren't that great, and I was super, super car dead. Didn't even have many hands to be squeezing in position. I've got one hand to report on, so we'll go over that here outside instead of doing it in the car. A little bit of change of pace. So, middle position, an old guy opens up 15. Small blind calls 15. I'm in the big blind with 7-6 of clubs. Uh, I think a standard call. Obviously, I could be three betting, but against this guy's open, I think it's pretty tight open. I'm not looking to get two out of line. So, I call, and the flop comes 6-9-8 with two diamonds. So, I flop. The bottom pair open ended it was check, I check, and now the preflop opener bets 45 into 40 uh, after the rake is taken out. Uh, obviously, big bet, small blind folds. I'm not going anywhere. He's only playing like 200 more, so I think raising here is a mistake because he's just not going to fold any of his value hands. You know, on this like wet board, he's just going to have like two kings and be like, whatever, let's get it in. Uh, so I think I just too much equity to call. The plan here is if the turn's a diamond and it does go check, check, then I can bluff the river. Obviously, uh, I do think all my outs are alive as well. So I call the 45. The turn is the Jack of Diamonds. Uh, obviously a great card to possibly slow him down. I check and he checks it back. At this point, I'm obviously hoping to uh, end up making a hand on the river that's going to be what I assume is most of his over pairs, things of that nature, uh, or maybe top pair type hands, things of that, uh, of that sort. River, unfortunately, is an offsuit three. He's got 200, like I said, or about 200, something like that. So I decided to just rip it here. Uh, as, as I've been known to do, you know, when there are cap ranges, I try to attack and put max pressure. The pot is about like 130, something like that. So obviously a great spot to uh, essentially bet 2x pot and put his like one pair type holdings in, in tough shape. Uh, so I bet 200 and he tanks for a while, ends up folding. I assume he had me beat if he's going to be tanking there. Um, and other than that, just nothing else really interesting to report. I ended up winning like 160 bucks or something like that. Uh, nothing too exciting, just kind of a regular day. I'm gonna go grab some like early dinner and then pick up Charlie, and uh, that's it. Catch you guys later. Charlie, we chilling? You having some applesauce? Rounding up breakfast. Friday afternoon, editing some videos. Charlie chilling. What are you doing? And then we'll head off to play. You're right. The wife has corrected me. It is Friday morning before 8 o'clock. I've been up since 4 in the morning because we've been editing. So everything is moved in my brain. Charlie, is that yummy? You say delicious. Delicious! <laughs> you ready to go to school? Yes, 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 yes. All right, new version of hand histories from the car. In Stockton for the weekend, visiting family. Got a couple of hands to recount from Friday night that I didn't have a chance to do yet. Um, also, had a great time this afternoon. Went to Sky Zone with Charlie and his cousin. Bounced around like crazy. Got some awesome footage from there to roll that. Had Sky Zone in Stockton. Man, this is so much fun. If you've never been, you gotta do it. Tons of fun. Just... <laughs> Ah! 
Are we about together? bed super super early at like eight o'clock now it's two o'clock in the morning woke up i'm starving have to go get some mickey d's oh yeah late night food so uh you know this will be like one of those sad sessions from the vehicle <laughs> recounting some hands also my voice is gone i'm kind of sick so please excuse that also wanted to mention i've been watching the party poker live PLO cash game on YouTube today or tonight rather it's been super super sick right now I think they're playing 4,000 8,000 2,000 4,000 with 8,000 straddle it's a 16,000 dollar straddle Sam Trickett uh, Leon Rob Young and Matt Kirk insanity I'm sure it'll probably still be up on YouTube afterwards if you have a chance and love PLO watch it sick action some crazy crazy hands all right, let's get into the two interesting hands that I did play on Friday. Uh, as I mentioned, Thursday, I think I ended up winning 150. Not much not much happened. The uh, game wasn't that great. Uh, so uh, the, the game is playing with a lot of limps. There's, uh, you know, oftentimes in these 3-5 in these uh, games, 2-5 games, you'll see that uh, people just love limping and then the whole table starts limping. And it can be easy to fall into that trap where, like, a bunch of people limp. And so you over limp. Uh, you know, some hands like King-10, Queen-10, Jack-10, things of that nature, hoping to make a big hand. The truth of the matter is, this is a big mistake. When people are limping a wide range, you want to be isolating in position uh, hands that can connect well. You know, if you end up having like Jack-10 suited, don't over limp, make a big raise, try to isolate the field, and play a hand that plays well post-flop in position. Because, uh, you know, if all you're doing is limping and trying to make a big hand with King-10 offsuit, the truth of the matter is it's just not going to happen often enough, especially in multi-way pots. And, uh, you know, oftentimes if you do make a big hand in like a five-way, six-way pot, no one's really going to pay you off. People just don't have anything themselves. So be aggressive. Attack the limpers. In this game, uh, as I mentioned, people have been limping up a lot. I started falling into that trap a little bit. This hand, i gotten sick of it. There's three limpers to me. I'm in the cutoff with queen 10 off. I make it 40. Folds back to the first limper, uh, who is kind of a unknown whale. Uh, he, like I said, I've mentioned before, he's just become a lot tighter and a lot better over the last like year or two. He ends up folding. Now the player after him who limped calls 40. 
and the player to his immediate left calls as well. When the second one calls, the first one goes, oh, I didn't even know you had a hand. So I don't know if he's calling really wide because he thinks it's head up, heads up or uh, what exactly is going on. Pre-flop, he's kind of shaking his head, which uh, I think is kind of weird whenever people are doing like weird, like, oh, yeah, I don't really like it. The flop comes king, queen of diamonds, the eight of hearts. Uh, the guy who's kind of shaking his head around, again, <laughs> makes this like look like he doesn't like the flop. He checks, player after him checks. Uh, in this spot, when this guy's putting on this big acting show, pre-flop and post-flop, I'm a little worried. I don't expect the king ever to fold here. I decided to just check it back um, and kind of reevaluate on turns. Like I said, I am a little worried uh, of exactly what, he, what he's kind of putting this acting show on. Turn is the nine of hearts. And again, he checks. When he checks here twice, I think he's just probably, you know, doesn't have much. Maybe it was a misread on my part. This happens, obviously, all the time in live poker where people do weird things. And I kind of think that maybe they're stronger than they are. So at this point, I, I don't think he has much of anything. Now, the second player begins to, like, amass a, a, a bet together. And it looks like he's about to bet 90. He ends up betting 75. Uh, obviously, I could have the best hand here with the second pair. Maybe he turned a flush draw. Maybe turn a straight and a flush draw. I do have the 10 as a blocker to the straight. Um, I'm thinking of raising. The problem is he only has like 450 left. So I'm afraid that if I raise to something like 210, it doesn't leave him with much on the river to be able to bluff him off of top pair. So uh, after a while, I decided to just call and reevaluate on the river. Possibly, if it's a bad river for him, try to bluff him off of his hands. The player behind us does fold. Now, the river is the ace of diamonds, completing the front door flush draw, and he immediately goes to, like, grab uh, big chips. It looks like he's going to bet, like, 250, something like that, uh, which obviously I kind of hate. It makes me feel like I have a fold, but he ends up betting 150. He pulls back an extra $100 chip and just bets 150. I sense weakness. I don't feel like he's very strong. The front door flush did complete. I could have the best hand with a queen, like, maybe he does have missed hearts. Uh, like Maybe he has, like, five, six hearts, six, seven hearts, something like that. At the same time, I'm not a fan of just calling here with uh, with the queen trying to hero and hope to beat like his missed heart draws. I think since I do sense weakness, the much better play is to just jam. As I mentioned before, I hate these spots because I feel like people hate folding to river uh, raises. But since I do sense weakness, I'm going to pounce. I end up making it 500. Now the question is, what am I representing Absolutely nothing. I can't really even think of any hands that I play in this manner. Um, the thing is, is that he's not a pro. I can sense he's not a pro just from the way he handles his chips, his bet sizing, everything. So I don't feel like I have to tell a story that makes sense. Um, similarly, the way he played his hand, it just doesn't feel like he himself has a flush. So I think I can represent a lot of hands here. Uh, I think maybe the only hand that I do represent is like ace-queen. Uh, by checking back the flop with second pair on the river. I most likely have the best hand. The thing is, is I would just call this river. I would never be raising because I don't think I'm going to get valued from any worse hands, really. Maybe king, queen. So I probably wouldn't be raising. Uh, again, I don't think I need to tell uh, an intelligence story in this, in this case because of uh, who the specific player is. So the question is, do we get heroed? And what is he heroing us with? Please comment down below. Let me know what you think. Are we getting called in this spot where uh, I'm monkeying around as usual? So, thankfully for us, he goes into the tank and ends up folding. It is possible that the queen was the best hand. Uh, I'm not really sure, but I think I just like raising the river, as I mentioned. There's way too many hands that have us beat as played. Like I said, I'm not really representing much, but sometimes you, you don't have to tell a believable story if you feel like you're up against a player who just isn't a thinking opponent. As I mentioned earlier, if I didn't you know, raise this hand, I wouldn't have won what is a, a pretty sizable pot. By isolating my players in position, I can put them on hand ranges. It's pretty clear that neither of these players has a hand like ace-king, ace-queen. I don't expect them to be limping them uh, and not like limp re-raising. So I can represent much stronger hands. Similarly, because I have this, the 10, I have the straight blockers. So I went for it. Uh, and then this next hand, I'm not very proud of, to be honest with you. I had just... Uh, isolated uh, uh, limper with Queen Jack and then got like min race jammed on for like 60 bucks. Uh, obviously, I had a call and we ended up chopping Queen Jack versus Queen Jack. So now I pick up Ace 3 of clubs. 
Uh, I think under the gun. Obviously, I think this is almost always just a fold. This hand does not play well out of position. Um, but in this game, I just wasn't in the mood to fold. Uh, I like playing suited aces, especially like wheel suited aces. Uh, I just decided I didn't want to open preflop. I think the much better play in this situation is to open preflop. I end up limping for five. Now it folds to a middle position player who's an older gentleman, maybe like 50, 60 years old. He makes it 30, folds to me once again. This is a clear fold. This hand does not play well out of position. We're both playing relatively deep. I think he has over a K. I have him covered. So in these situations, I, I just love playing pots. I call 25 more. Flop comes ace, king, deuce with two spades. I check and he bets 50 into like 60. It's a really big bet. Essentially what he's representing is a hand like top set of aces, set of kings, or ace, king. Maybe sometimes ace, queen. Obviously, because I flop top pair, I'm not folding. I also have a backdoor wheel draw. So I call pre-flop. I had mentioned to this player or to the dealer, I'm like, dealer, put a lot of sixes on the flop. Like three sixes. The turn ends up coming a six. I check, and now he goes, well, if you got that six, bless you. And he bets 150. When he bets 150 in this spot, I think, again, he's exactly representing aces, ace, king, kings. And those hands are hard to have. Uh, I go to the tank, and I feel like he might be bluffing, but just kind of because of the player type, who it is, I don't think I can continue here. Like, if I call this bet, I might be facing another uh, large river bet, which, once again, is why you shouldn't be playing this hand out of position. You get yourself in these tricky spots where facing aggression, you just have to fold. The key to poker is playing hands in position, as I just mentioned in the previous pot. Why did I do this here? I don't know. I'm bad. I'm, you know, doing goofy things. Should just be folding here pre-flop. If I am going to play the hand, I should be the aggressor and opening pre-flop. Now I've got myself in a sticky situation. I don't really know what to do. So I've got to fold. As I'm folding, I tell the player, you know what? I feel like you're bluffing me, but I can't call. And so I muck. Uh, the question is, what do you think? You know, he's, he's about to show us. What do you think he has? Does he have a value hand? What are, what are the hands I am beating? So he ends up rolling over a queen jack of hearts for a gut shot. He laughs, saying, well, you guys just got in pre-flop with Queen Jack, both of you. So uh, here I thought I was going to try the same thing, which goes to show you, you know, uh, never underestimate your opponents. You know, he because of the way I played my hand, he was able to limit what I have for a hand. He can represent all the large hands. I can't really. And he applied maximum pressure. So kudos to him. He played the hand really, really well. And uh, goes to show you why you want to be playing hands in no limit hold'em in position. That's about all we have for today. I ended up winning $501 on Friday. I think $150 on Thursday. A nice little round out to the week. Had a great time this weekend in Stockton, spending time with family. Charlie had a fantastic time at Sky Zone. I think I'm going to be going there a lot going forward. I hope all of you had a fantastic weekend. Thanks for all the support. Comments have been amazing. Have a great night.